Hi everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today we're gonna do a job on Dad's Dakota here. He says it's making a noise, so let's see what we can find out. Yeah, it's making a noise, that's for sure. I think I know what it is. The AC clutch is wasted. You can actually see bits of it flying out as it's running. You can see here all the all the metal filings and stuff. The bearing in this thing has just gone, flew into a million pieces. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take it apart. I've already gone ahead and ordered a belt kit. So that's a belt, the tensioner and the idler pulley because it's still got the original belt on it. Um, and it's uh, it's 19 years old. This is a 2003 truck. It doesn't have a ton of miles on it, granted, but that's still, that's pretty good for your original belt. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is get this thing off first because we've decided that uh, rather than buy aftermarket stuff, there's just so many problems with aftermarket stuff lately. I'm just going to go up to the wreckers and pull one off, one in the wreckers. So first thing I'm going to do is go get my serpentine belt tool. And we'll get the belt off and we'll go from there. And unlike what I usually do when I take these things off, I actually made sure it still has the belt routing decal on it. I mean, it's easy enough to find on Google, but, but that's good. Because I always say I'm going to remember it and I never remember it. So unlike some of the cars around here, the serpentine belt tool you need for this is just a 15 millimeter wrench. And then we'll get, oh, look at that. Yeah, oh, that's seen better days, eh? Okay, there we go. So now we'll get the belt out of here. All right, if if your clutch still worked, and this one doesn't because this thing has been flopping around and it's eaten into the coil and it's just dead, you can go inside and turn on the air conditioning, like with the engine off, but just flick the air conditioning on, which will engage the clutch while the belt is still on, and you'll be able to get this nut off. We couldn't do that. And there is a special tool that grabs the front of this clutch. It's like a round plate with three little pins in it. There's three little holes there. But all we did was we grabbed the center of the clutch hub with a channel lock plier. And you can see here we've been able to get the nut loose. Now, I got the nut off. We may not be out of the woods yet. I got to jiggle this thing off and see if this hub will come out with the fan shroud here. Um, I'm not sure. I don't even know how this thing is on. Some of these things are on a, a, a taper with a keyway. Some of them are on a spline. Um, they're not all the easiest thing in the world to get off. So I'm going to see how this one's on in a sec. I got behind it with a couple of screwdrivers. And you can see here it just comes off. So this one is a splined one. It's not um, on a taper. And look at that. Out it comes. Oh, there's part of the bearing. There's balls and stuff all hanging in there. Let me give it a spin and get all that junk out of there. You got to be careful working on this because all this shrapnel in here will cut you like a razor, man. Okay, now there should be, uh, I can see it. It's hard to see in there, but there's a snap ring. There's a snap ring that holds this piece on. So I'll get in there with a snap ring plier and get that off. And then that'll get the, the pulley and what's left of the bearing out. So we managed to get the snap ring off and drop it. And lucky for us, it was, uh, oh, I see it way down there. Let me go get my long magnet. There it is. We'll hang on to it for now. Um, it's probably wrecked from the heat, but worse comes to worse. I've, I've reformed them before. All right, now this hub should come off. Should. So, um, this thing, what I'm afraid has happened, I'm afraid that the, the inner race of the bearing has spun on the, the hub of the compressor and gotten kind of fused onto there because it, it just won't budge. So I'm trying to get at it. So I went around and I cut these little spokes with a cutoff wheel and knocked this thing off. If any of you use our NASCAR fans, and you witnessed that Kansas Speedway when they couldn't get the right rear wheel off Eric Jones' car. 
and this is the kind of stuff they had to do. So I'm going to keep at this and we'll see where we get. You can see here uh, what's left in there. I'll, I'll keep working on this and see if we can get it out. Well, after much butcher work and debauchery, I had to resort to this and this and start cutting the clutch away. Here's some of it here. So I could get to the point where I could split this bearing and get it off. Now we have to look if there's anything left of the hub on the actual compressor. So um, it's actually not too bad. I did leave a little mark in there with the grinder from um, splitting this bearing, but um, it's okay. I'll buff it up once I've got this off. Now, there's one more snap ring in there and the magnet part of the clutch should just come right off now, theoretically. Okay. Now we're gonna have a bit of a fight with this snap ring. It's all wadded in there. Give me a second. Well, there you have it. There's the clutch. It was a bit of work, but we've got it off. Now we're off to the wreckers. Well, here we are in the wreckers and this place never disappoints. Look at that. Fenders and stuff are all inside it. Spare on the back. Unbelievable. Some bullet holes in it. Wow. <laughs> this old Ford Tempo. Wow. This is the four cylinder one. <sighs> Haven't seen one of these in years. Wow. This is like the second generation one. Fancy one's got a luggage rack. Now an old Chevy Corsica. You can tell when the price of scrap goes up, everybody starts cleaning out their yards and all these old cars start showing up in the boneyard. Here's a silver caliber that just came in. I'm still looking for doors and fenders for mine, but they're all roached on this one as usual. Toyota truck, cheap, needs slight frame repair. Well, can you believe this? The first one I found and it's got an AC bypass on it. <laughs> oh, brother. There's three of these um, Dakotas in here. The one I showed you down there had an AC bypass on it, so we can't get anything from it. The other one over there had a V8 in it, completely different. This one's got a, a 3.9 Magnum, just like what we're working on. And the clutch is good. The bearing is nice and smooth. So we'll pull this off. I'm just going to take the whole compressor off it and uh, strip it here on my cart. And there we go. We got it off. A lot easier than the one at home. Watch this old Ford van meet its maker. I need the windshield out of that van. And they're squishing it. There it goes. Oh, I don't think the windshield's any good anymore. Oh. Well, it was a high top. So much for that. We've got all our parts now, so we're gonna start putting this back thing, uh, this thing back together. First, we're going to install the idler and the tensioner. Here's our kit that we bought. Complete serpentine kit. So you get um, a new belt, which just for uh, giggles, we're going to make sure it matches up with the old belt. Yeah, good there. And we got in there our tensioner and idler. So when we put our tensioner on, you'll see there's a little tang on the back, which fits into that notch there. That's what positions it. There's our idler and our tensioner. 
Now we can go ahead and start putting the clutch together. So, <clears throat> first thing that goes on is the coil, the, the electromagnetic coil, and it's just like the tensioner. It's got a little dimple on the back that lines up with that, and it's secured with this snap ring. Alrighty, let's see here. Whoops. All right, we got our snap ring in. Was a bit of a struggle, but uh, we were victorious. Now we're gonna fish the wire through. It goes, um, it goes under this little clip here, and you just, you just bend it over, just like that. And then it plugs in over here. It's gotta go under that, and it plugs in there like that. And see that little red tab there? That's what locks it. There, it can't come out. Now, it should be tie wrapped to the compressor here. The, the original tie wrap is a nice kind of 90 degree affair, but we'll just put a, a normal tie wrap around there and that'll be plenty fine. Next that is gonna go on is this. Um, it's the actual pulley for the AC clutch. So it goes on there like that and it's held on with a snap ring. So um, normally, if this was not a sealed bearing, with with these uh, rubbery or whatever kind of seals they are. I will put this in my toaster oven and heat it up so it would just slide on. Um, I'm not really sure I want to do that with this. So we're going to try first, we're going to try putting a little light oil on there and just gently tap it on. And if it goes, it goes. If not, we'll have to warm it up a bit. Maybe I won't warm it up as much as I normally would. Sometimes you just sit this with a 100 watt light bulb over top of it and it's enough to just spread it that one or two thou you need. But anyway, we'll give her a try. That's not bad, is it? It's going. So once we've got that on, we put the outer snap ring on. There we go. And I'll have to give it a little tap with a punch to get it to get it seated in. All right, now we're going to put on the, I don't know what you want to call it, the clutch plate, the reaction plate. And there's a couple of things to bear in mind here. Number one is this little shim goes on there first. That is what sets the, the released clearance between this. Now, I'm sure if you read the manual, there's a way to calculate it, and there's selective shims you can buy, but this being an old clutch that's got wear and stuff on it, don't ask me. We're just going to put back the one that was there. So that goes on there, like that. Now, before you put this on, you'll notice, I don't know if you could see it in here, it's got a dummy spline or a double spline there. And you'll notice on the front of it, it's got this cut off. So I don't know if that's for balance or, or what, but they want this to go on a certain way. And so here is our dummy spline right there on the top. So we're just gonna line that up and this baby should go right on. Then we just have to buzz the locking nut onto the front of it. We installed our new serpentine belt according to the diagram here. And even though I had the diagram, I still did it wrong the first time, but it's good now. So what we're gonna do now is start the thing up and make sure uh, it's charging and that it's nice and quiet. And then we'll put the rest of this stuff back together. Nice and quiet. Now I'm going to click on the air conditioning and we'll see if that works. You 
Nope. That's interesting. Okay. Um, it doesn't seem to have any refrigerant in it. So that I'm, I was kind of worried that in this whole fracas with this, that some of the metal shrapnel might have gotten in there and taken out the seal and discharged it. Or it could be something completely different that's discharged it. But um, for now, it's discharged and the air conditioning is not, not going to work. We'll have to tackle that as a separate project. Now we can put the fan back on. It's a right hand thread, so you just you just screw it on. And once it bottoms out, we'll get the we'll get the wrench and give it just a little oink. And it actually is tightened by like the rotation of the engine. Keeps it from loosening off. It's nice to have a set of fan clutch wrenches around. There we go. Now it's not going anywhere, the man said. So the last thing we've done is we've put the top half of the fan shroud back on and put the air box, air box back on. And you can see here, if, it, if the compressor is the reason that it no longer has refrigerant in it, um, it's easy to pluck this just off the top of it without disturbing any of this other stuff again. But that's going to have to go into a... A garage to be dealt with because I, I don't have the equipment to do that type of work here so we're all back together and working fine um, I phoned up my dad and he said uh, the air conditioning was working so now it's not because all the refrigerant is gone from it I don't know where it went but when I asked him he did say that he had not tried it yet uh, this season so it could have it could have gone dead over the winter. It, there could be a hole in the condenser or something. I, I don't know. And because I tried following some of the lines looking for the, you usually see an oily streak where they're leaking, but he's had this thing oil sprayed every fall so it doesn't rust. And there is so much oil everywhere, I can't tell if it's leaking or not. So um, what he's gonna do, he knows a guy that's got an actual uh, mechanic shop. He's gonna take it over there and let them see if they can figure out what the heck is leaking because um, there is a possibility that some of the junk from that clutch bearing went and took out the seal in the front of the compressor but there was absolutely no evidence of that there was no oil no nothing it was bone dry so i don't think the compressor is at fault here um but there's only one way to find out he's going to go and have it leak tested then we'll know for sure anyway at least my part of the job is done I can give it back to him. He's coming to, uh, up in the morning to get it, and he can uh, happily motor on his way. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Um, I hope you'll come back again to see what we're doing. And until then, this is Kevin checking out from the Claremont Classic Garage. So long.